Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I am at Mojave Spaceport. And at Mojave Air and Spaceport, they have this ridiculous thing here. This is the rotary rockets Roton. And this was supposed to be, well, this was a test platform for a concept which was half helicopter, half rocket. It was supposed to offer single stage to orbit capability. And this test device actually had rotor blades up on the top of it. The rotary rocket is one of my favorite space concepts, not because it's necessarily practical, but because it's so out there. It was conceived by Gary Hudson and Bevan McKinney. And as I said, it had helicopter rotor blades that were driven by little tip gas jets. And then it would have a main engine underneath that was a kind of an aerospike design, at least in concept. It never made it that far. Now, this was the test vehicle where they just wanted to see whether it could fly like a helicopter, and it was largely built by scaled composites who are, of course, uh, are at Mojave, and they've been building a lot of experimental vehicles for a long time. And indeed, next to the Roton, there's a replica of Spaceship One. That was the aircraft built, again, by Scaled Composites, which was able to win the Ansari X Prize by flying to space twice within a week back in 2004. Above it, there is a much smaller replica of the Voyager aircraft. This was the first aircraft to be able to fly around the world without refueling. These weren't just built by the same company, incidentally. The pilot that flew Spaceship One to space on its final flight was Brian Binney, and he was also the test pilot for the first flights of the rotary rocket. While rotary rockets intended their vehicle to ultimately go to space, they first wanted to make sure that it could fly under its rotor blades inside the Earth's atmosphere. And so, yeah, they had room for a pair of pilots who would learn how to fly this thing, learn how to land this thing. You know, unlike a lot of space startups, Rotary Rockets did have hardware that did in fact fly. This is video from one of the test flights, and yeah, the whole vehicle was able to get off the ground and fly around under its own power. And the fact that this is so stable is in large part due to the skills of the test pilot. This was a very difficult vehicle to fly, but it was an early prototype for the ultimate concept, which would be an orbital launch system. Now, what many of you are wondering, why would you combine a helicopter with a rocket? Well, in the original idea, it would actually use the rotor blades to lift up off the ground, but later on they refined their concept and the rotor blades weren't going to be used for liftoff. In the early 1960s, engineers at NASA investigated using a set of rotor blades to recover space capsules, with an eye to recovering the Apollo capsule on return from the moon. Since the capsule was descending, most of the energy to drive the rotors would come from the air flow through the disc, but they did have the option of small tip jets to uh, provide power and control where necessary. Now, obviously, the Apollo program decided to go with rather more boring parachutes because, after all, they had that end-of-decade goal to meet. But Gary Hudson, never letting a good idea go to waste, decided that it would be the perfect thing to scale up to, uh, to land his fully reusable single-stage-to-orbit ro rocket concept. Now, Gary Hudson had actually been working in commercial spaceflight for quite a while. He was the person behind the Percheron rocket, which was the predecessor to the Conestoga private rocket. But this was a completely radical concept, as you can see in this wonderful promotional movie from the era, combining the finest in 1990s CGI and green screen. Now, this concept had two astronauts getting on the launch vehicle with the satellite, and the original pitch actually was they wanted a vehicle that could carry a pair of astronauts and a ham sandwich to orbit. The engine that they were supposed to use was another really interesting concept. It was supposed to be 96 little small rocket engines arranged in a ring facing inwards, which would use the base of the rocket as the spike of an aerospike. That was the concept, and in theory, well, in their concept, in their wildest dreams, this would carry the entire vehicle with the satellite and the astronauts into space without any staging required. I have no idea where the fuel tanks exist in this concept video, but uh, yes, certainly this has to be a very efficient rocket if it's able to carry a satellite this big.
During the development, however, they decided to switch to an engine based on the fast track engine that NASA had been developing for low cost applications. This was a simple kerosene liquid oxygen engine that used a pintle injector and ablative nozzle. And guess what? It would actually be the basis for the Merlin engine used by SpaceX and the Falcon 9 rockets. Another parallel with SpaceX is that the heat shield for this design was supposed to be 100% reusable. So it was going to use transpiration cooling. It was going to be a water-cooled heat shield in this case, all metal, and uh, it would have, of course, steam boiling out through pores in the surface. And yes, of course, you can see here it landing very carefully back at its re launch site so that the vehicle can be refurbished and reused as quickly as possible. That was the plan, of course, but the reality didn't quite work out that way. They did well at first, raising about $30 million from private investors, including Tom Clancy, but uh, they then failed to actually secure any further investment. They would have needed about another $120 million to really make it into a launch vehicle, at least based on their uh, pitch. They stopped developing hardware in 2000, and the company officially closed its doors in 2001. But despite this project failing, I still love this. And really, it's actually the kind of start of Mojave's spaceport uh, as a spaceport. Most of the projects that have come since then have still involved scaled composites. We've, of course, got Virgin Galactic, and we've got Strato Launch. And separately, you have the likes of Mast and Space Systems. And yeah, also as a Kerbal player, I love trying to build this thing and make it work. I did this on Twitch TV a couple of years ago. This is in Kerbal Space Program using Infernal Robotics, and this is entirely being driven according to the physics of the system, right? There's no cheats here. There's no electrical power or motors being used to drive these rotors. Unlike those fancy CGI animations from the 90s, this at least was being sort of simulated in Kerbal Space Program, which yeah, I guess gives some credence to the idea. When you look at the rotary rocket concept, most people initially think the helicopter blades are the most ridiculous thing about it. But when you actually look at it harder, I think the rocket engine and the concept of single stage to orbit, those were the real blockers they wouldn't have solved. So yeah, if you're a space nerd that happens to find yourself near Mojave, you should go and check out this little bit of your commercial space history. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.